Welcome back, everybody, to another fun-filled episode of The First Watch. I am Andrew Coons, the Dungeon Master for our adventures, and very excited to be welcoming welcoming everybody back for episode 11, uh, where the party deals with the consequences of their actions. Uh, but let's meet that party. Let's popcorn around and meet everybody, and we're going to start with Darby. Hi, my name is Darby. You can find me on the internet as Chaotic Darby. Uh, I, I'm playing Peony, your local friendly artificer, only an artificer whose greatest friends in the world are Pre, Grogus, Artemis, Uranus, Malachite, the Ranger, all that good stuff. I'll pass it along <laughs> to Joe. Hey everybody, I'm Joe. I am not a ranger playing a ranger. I am playing Malachite the Artificer, um, the Earth Genasi Artificer to be exact. And I will throw it to Cheryl. That's me. I'm Cheryl. You can find me on the internet as the Roving Naturalist and running the Nature Check Project. And I have played Pry the Tiefling Rogue. Um, and I will pass it to Casey. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Casey. Uh, you can find me. I'm playing Aramis, the half elf, bard, half warlock, uh, multi class. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Casey McNeil or on Instagram at under Casey McNeil. And I'm going to throw it to Blake. Yo, what up, everybody? Blake. You can find my Twitter at Blake C. Francis, playing Grokus Darkbringer, uh, Dwarf Cleric. And last but not least, Dana, take it away. Hi, I'm Dana. I'm going to be playing the Asimar wizard, uh, Artemis Valor. You can find me on Twitter at a bit meddlesome. And back to Andrew. Oh my God, we're all so nervous, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, uh, oh the nerves are real tonight. Better. I'm good. I'm, I'm ready to be better. <laughs> Everybody's like, hi, I'm, I'm playing this character. Oh. <laughs> Please answer. Uh, <laughs> okay. Please I this get RTDT scream to lighten the mood. No, if you want us to okay. be playing these that's characters, okay. please give us a thumbs up to if you want us to live. So if you can, please, all the yeah, thumbs up to save like our characters <laughs> to save us right now. Thank you. <laughs> one Every subscription like equals subscribe. one safe character. So there you go. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, and hit the yes. bell icon to get notifications of when we upload. And each of those is a health potion. This is great, Darby. You are now going to take over all of our our little plugs at the beginning and end. Play yourself. So so <laughs> the details will kill you every time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm well, great. With no more beating around the bush, let's get into tonight's episode of The First Watch. After learning of the demise of the Dwarven Empire in the mines, the party was left with a near impossible decision of whether to delve deeper and try to find uh, what remains of the Dwarven society that has uh, secluded itself deep underground in order to stop a bout of vampirism from running amok in the country. or go deal with the problem at hand, which were uh, the, the three people who were uh, put into uh, essentially servitude or slavery here in the mines, uh, working to uncover the secrets of the machines. 
And you all decided that that problem was a little more pressing as there were people to actually help uh, in that moment. So you all left the mines uh, and began the process of gathering information on what to do next. You knew that a certain tiefling by the name of Elixio was one of Brobat's lieutenants and that he was the one that had taken uh, the, the workers and put them in there uh, and forced them to work on the machines. You met up with the leader of Realm Shield, uh, Azure Nuck, a dragon-born ranger who was able to provide you a decent amount of information about the town, not everything you wanted to know, but enough to get off on the right track. And so you began scouring the city. Some of you went into the lower levels looking for the door of Brobat Great Brew's hideout, which you knew was an inky black, uh, unnaturally black door, and you found it. And through a very clever use of Malachite's homunculus and the invisibility spell and detect magic, uh, you all were able to get a little more information than this DM thought you were going to get in that session. Uh, so you were able to find out that all the windows are protected by abjuration magic and that the door itself was protected by not only abjuration, but some sort of illusion magic. In the time you were there, you didn't see anybody coming in and out. And the entire surrounding area seemed pretty barren as well. Something is keeping people away from this part of town. The other group went up into the uh, kind of top part of society, um, looked around, went to the library, I believe, to try to get some information and found, uh, Artemis, you found that a book on Graviturgy was on its way from Excessa, but not there quite yet. And you all eventually did find uh, Elixio's house with the help of the librarian um, who knew who he was. You all convened, and three of you decided to go in, uh, to knock on the door and go in. Um, it was Pry, Aranis, and Artemis uh, who knocked on the door, while uh, Malachi, Peony, and uh, Grokus went to the roof to, to keep watch. And the man himself greeted you, Elixio, the tiefling uh, with uh, a gaudy air about, uh, about him. And he invited you all in and had a conversation with you about what you were doing in the city and who he could connect you with. Uh, but the entire thing was a ruse, as through Detect Thoughts, Artemis, you found out that he knew who you were and was playing you along. And there at the end of our session, he also revealed he knew that you were reading his thoughts. Aranis jumped forward to try and put the cone of slimming on his head and turn him into a, a flattened version of himself, which worked to get it on, but unfortunately the cone itself did not work as uh, Elixir was not willing. He shoved you off, stood up aggressively, and you all faced off, and that is where we're picking up tonight. So. You all intended to uh, engage with him, uh, as was said at the end of last session, so I would like you to go ahead and roll initiative, just those three players that are in there. While you're doing that, let's pull our camera back, out through one of the windows, and up, up over top to the top of the roof, where we find Grokus, Peony, and Malachite. What have you all been doing as you watched your party members go into the house and the door shut behind them? Did anyone see anything? My, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. Um, I, what, do we, what, can, what can we see from here? What can Broca still like see from, from here? From the roof itself, not much. Um, you are, are on the roof of the building. There is no skylight. Um, there are some chimneys, but nothing that you can see down into, uh, just the fireplaces below. Do we want to send Kettle and, and, and um, um, um... Oh, what's his name, Kevin? Kingsley. <laughs> Kingsley. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. I was saying Kingsley. <laughs> yeah, Kingsley. Do we want to send Pebble and Kingsley to kind of yes. peek in through the windows, maybe? See can, if they can see him. Yeah. I guess in Schubert, too, but that might be a little dangerous for Schubert, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep Schubert them. Yeah, let's keep Schubert safe. Yeah, Schubert is, is so important. Ooh, can I send Gerald? Who? You can certainly try it. Gerald. I, 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 who's okay. Gerald again? I'm sorry. Uh, Gerald is my little crab who goes up. <laughs> oh, and I would like to note that I still have concentration up on, um, that, uh, cause last an hour, I don't know, I don't know if they've been talking for an hour, the enhanced ability on both the yes. and, um, okay. Yep, that so is still all that for, for charisma, just so. Nope, nope, nope. Eagle Splendor. Meet it. 
Cool. Cooksy, don't kill us. <laughs> Advantage. <laughs> okay. All right, so you're sending the familiars down? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so go I, ahead and... Okay. Yeah, I tell Kingsley, like, come back up if anything <clears throat> weird happens. If if some kind of fighting happens or anything like that, if you see anything suspicious, just come on. Come on up. Zzz. And right. Kingsley zzz, 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 down away from you. I guess Petal just skitters down the building and yes, my precious right. baby, go find them, and then we will join you if they're in danger. Just and I say pretty yeah. to each of them, even the creature might not be so whatever. So I say pretty each of them really quickly before they go off. So okay, yeah. are you trying to give them guidance or something? No, I can't because yeah. guidance is concentration. I have that going oh, already. With them. Gotcha. So just give them a prayer, just give them a little prayer to enter, okay. just for whatever that might do. Sounds good. Um, so he. He yep. definitely knows that they're who we are. <laughs> His body language is super not great, so... Who says, oh, are you... Elixio? The guy? Yeah. Are you he... seeing them right? No, before before they went in, right? That was the read that... Yeah, I you got did a really quick inside check, oh. and you, you caught the fact that he <clears throat> there was a moment of recognition on oh. his face before he let them in. Oh, yeah. should we... You think we should go down there then? I mean, if he knows, isn't that kind of... We should probably find where they are, maybe? In the, I don't know how well you can hop from rooftop to rooftop. Uh, um, I can... I can I can definitely try. I'm pretty honored that I don't break my kneecaps, but... Um, yes, I can definitely give it, give it a go. Can we probably just get down? Because it might be a little easier on my joints. Yeah. What do we what do we see like along the side of the house? Like, is there an alley or is it? What's the... uh, no, no alleys because there's grounds oh. and there's property around yeah. all the houses here. Now, not a ton for everybody's house, but there's at least a um, a decent yard of sorts um, uh, that are that are kind of along both sides. So yeah, you've got room to maneuver. Please. So if we. Yeah, maybe we could climb down from here and sneak around in the bushes or whatever. Yes, um, yes we definitely. I'm not the most um, sneaky, but I can. I'll do, I'll do the best that I can do. Uh, I apologize. I'm. Not. It can be a little clingy and clutchy sometimes. So, but let's let's go ahead and try that at least. I mean, that's the best option we have. I feel like. Well, I'm not super sneaky either. So. I'm sneaky. Let's go, um, because it might take a little time to get down, so let's, um, let's go and look at both you guys in the eyes and say, like, hey, it's going to, whatever happens, we just got to be the each other, give each other the balance that we need, so whatever happens out there, like, I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that we all stay, you know, on the side of uh, life, so. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. It's all going to bounce out in the end, so whatever happens, but, um, yeah. I really enjoyed being able to work with you guys, so let's go. Let's do it. Rooftop people. Yay! Oh, Paul. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I said getting down is not a problem, but please, uh, uh, so are you all going together or are you going in different directions? I think we should stick together. Yeah, I was going to stick together. together. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll a stealth check for me for everybody, please. Disadvantage. I have advantage because uh, <laughs> I got my hood up. Well, hopefully you can cover for me. Let's see. Seven for me. So we, uh, seven for me as well. Uh, Disadvantage. Not that good. Fourteen. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Not that great. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Because I need to make a roll. Carol, your face. <laughs> okay. Uh, you are walking around the edge of the building. kind of. Are you looking through windows and everything? Is that kind of the, the idea here? Well, perception around us first. As soon as you get yeah. on the ground, can you sure. do your perception? Okay. Yeah, I'll use my perception to listen in to see if deep I Deep breath, Cheryl. Deep breath, Cheryl. <laughs> deep breath, <laughs> Casey. Really fine. You guys, it's all, come on. We get, it's all good. We're not right. stressed. I'm not stressed. Perception. We'll okay, so looking around you immediately. 
Looking around you immediately, you don't see anybody looking your direction. You see people kind of in the streets and uh, kind of going by. The population up here is much less. It's much quieter. Um, only a handful of people coming and going versus kind of the mobs that you would have down um, in the in the lower levels. Um, so no one kind of giving you a weird look in the moment. Um, so yeah, where are you going? What are you doing? Listening in at the window to see if I can hear any... Okay. Talking. Go ahead and anyone who wants to look or listen in, go ahead and roll perception checks. I'll give I'll give I'll give one of them advantage. I'll get help. So I'll go give like, you know, um maybe like a boost if she's like you no know, too small for the window, like a boost up or something to to help out. I love it. I love First, it. Now I roll a natural twenty. Help Ooh. away. Oh, hey, hey, natural twenty yes. is gonna be better than whatever I got. Total of uh twenty three. Twenty three? 22. I rolled a 13. Well, it's not an auto success. Yeah. Uh, 22 and 23. Those are very, very good. Um, So as you both find a spot uh, by the window, um, different windows to to kind of listen in down this this long hall, but you peek in real quick and you see, as described before, this kind of large open living room type space with white marble flooring and kind of like this conversation pit in the middle. Um, and you see the your three um, comrades as well as Elixio and a large brown dog um, and also uh, a triton um, that is kind of dressed in fine clothes um, and serving. And so you kind of see the layout and you stop and you listen and you pick up a decent amount of the conversation. Now, they're not speaking so loudly that you catch every word, but you're catching a lot of Elixio because he's he's speaking very loudly and kind of boldly and whatnot. So you're catching at least one side of the conversation, sort of like someone being on the telephone and bits and pieces of the other side as well. Um, so the information from last session um, about their conversation, you have a, a good amount of that. Um, does yeah. the dog look like a dog? Is Does the dog a, look like a dog? Is this a is this a normal looking dog? On a, on a scale of one to dog. Yeah. <laughs> on a scale of <laughs> actually, yeah, wait, with a are natural twenty 30, perception. Does it look like a dog? Are we within thirty feet of Artemis? Uh, let me see something real quick. Hold on. Because detect doesn't detect thoughts. It's not a it's not a specific creature. It's a range. No, mm-hmm. it's directed towards a specific creature. Oh, unless, um, unless, unless you have that, unless you have like the feature, I think. Yeah, uh, the um, and you are not within thirty feet of her. No, you look in, and the party is anywhere from forty mm-hmm. to fifty feet away, being in the center of this conversation pit. Okay. Um, the dog. Um, I mean, go ahead and roll perception or insight. I'll give help to whoever. Are you? As so I don't get anything from my natural anything? twenty. Well, you're my did- natural twenty, seeing the dog. I mean, if you if you want to specifically use the natural twenty on the dog, you can. I mean, if someone just sure. helps me, I can roll. I'm helping uh, you. Yeah, I'm gonna give you help. <laughs> like, do um, you see anything? Um, I get to re-roll once. Oh my gosh. You. Okay, it's not that great. Um, twenty-seven. Oh, twenty-seven. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not that great. Eighty-nine. Sixty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Well. Joe indicated he wanted to use his natural 20 on this, so I'm going to give it to him first. Um, Sounds good. Malachite, you're kind of looking through and you're picking up some of this conversation, then you take a look at the dog, and it looks like a big brown mastiff, kind of big old dog. Um, You're watching him for a moment, and you see his kind of foot move, you know, just kind of like shifting and whatnot, and a pillow that's probably about 10 feet away from him bumps. Okay. Oh. oh. God. <laughs> um. Hey, uh, that dog is weird. Um. Uh, Let me. My I think the eyes. dog is maybe bigger than it looks, or something, because it just moved and and the pillow moved at What's the same the dog time. Do. He, <laughs> the dog dude. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did Peony get uh, any information with uh, the... now looking, um, you watch 
and you all watch for another couple of minutes, and you see the dog shift, and you see, yeah, another, like, there's, like, a rug that, like, moves a little bit that's about ten feet away from it. Is, is it a snow so the front half or the back half? Uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of, like, moving its back. Like, you know, kind of shifting its back legs and its haunches. So. Okay. So what are you all doing? Watching? Okay. I mean, we're, we've got visual on them. You do have like visual on them. And yeah. Did, did, did you share what they said to, to everybody? Did you say? Uh, yeah, I'll just, okay. like, oh, and then he's talking and he says this thing. Oh, my God. And he said oh. that, and he's like, oh my god, Kree is so cool, she said this thing, and she's so cool. Armas is, like, really focused right now, like... <laughs> <laughs> and, all the way to, and all the way up to the part with the cones on the head, right? Did you, did you relay that part, or were you not so, there yet? So, as you're watching you were... and kind of relaying everything, you do see, all of a sudden, Artemis's face just drains of, of blood and color. And then you watch as Aranus leaps forward and tries to put the cone, puts the cone on Elixio's head, and then Elixio shoves him back. Everybody stands to their feet, and Elixio raises his fingers as if to snap them. Um, you also notice that the bard um, uh, from before the Triton, well, whether you remember he was the bard or not, the Triton servant, uh, had left the room at this point um, at Elixio's behest. Uh, but he stands up and... That's where we're going to pick up into initiative. So I would like for the other three to go ahead and roll your initiatives as well, please. Oh, us? Yes, because you're watching this happen. Now you're outside, so you're going to have to find a way in. <coughs> Excuse me. Three. Smash the window, baby. Food. <laughs> uh, Malachite? Six. Six. Oh, my goodness. Oh my and Peony? 26. 26. Okay. okay. Me first! Me! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how do I do gentle repose again? Okay. okay. So, as we kick off here, I've never been more tempted to fudge a roll in my entire life because Alexio rolled a natural one on his initiative. Yes! <laughs> yes! yes! Dog pile. This dog is what pile. you get for being a criminal! Yes! Dog, dog pile. Enter, oh, enter please. Which is probably more Thank information you, than I should be giving you at the top of the round, but I just couldn't help. It. It's just so... Thank funny. you, Enter. So, where is he <laughs> in the initiative order? Uh, not last. Um, all right. Let's start things off with Peony. You watch all this happen, and you are up first. He's about to snap his fingers? Yes. Where's Petal in relation to us? Did, would she have had I time would, to I mean, say, back? Yeah, she had time to come back and meet up with you all. Yeah. It's a free action to interact with an object, right? Depends on what you're doing, but yes. Can I open the window? Opening the window is going to be a little bit more because you're on the outside, um, and, you know, if it's not locked, you could throw it open, but you don't know. Fucking fart. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. Smash you always hold the it, window. You got to smash the window? Oh. Can I Hunter's Mark him first? Yes, you can. You have visual on him. You can Hunter's Mark him. Beep. Um, okay. Cast Hunter's Mark on him, and then... Yeah. Can I... Well, can I shoot through the window? <laughs> uh, Just, like... At disadvantage, I would say. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? I'm aiming at Elixio. Yes, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so you're, you're so lucky, Andrew. One of them's a natural twenty, um, <laughs> but the other one was a sixteen, so that's a plus nine to hit. So oh. uh, 20, twenty-five. Twenty-five hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah. As all of you inside, you hear glass shatter, and then an arrow comes out of nowhere and sticks into Alexio's left arm. Oh. Yeah, I like to hit the arm that's raised, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, oh, I, oh, oh, I just saw the message. <laughs> 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 
Y'all had a week to plan. Oh my god, read. though. <laughs> uh. So, there's one d6 plus another d6. Oh my god. Plus pedal. I'm so sorry! I... It's all, if, it's, if it's in character, it's all good. Like, this is Peony would do this. Around. This makes yeah. complete sense for Peony, so I'm for it. This is another d6. It's... This is magic at D&D, baby. This is gonna... I mean, this is, <laughs> this is how it goes. Best laid plans of my and men. 16 points of damage. Okay. 16 points of damage. Three of which is acid. Sounds okay, good. Let's go. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay. And is it a plus one bow or some sort of magical bow? Oof. It is not? Okay. No. Nope. Sounds good. It's just a plain, plain, plain old bow. Okay. So you stick him. Um, doesn't seem to stick as deep as you would have hoped um, for how beady of a shot it was. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Beefy boy. All right. Uh, anything else on your turn? Any movement? Can I duck? You can duck. That'll bring us to Pry. Uh, oh, boy. Okay. So Pry has stood up with her hand sort of like held out between the two boys that started the little scuffle and then like watches the arrow come in. <laughs> and is like, wait, 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 everyone, please stop. And then she's gonna turn to Alexio. I'm spending my whole turn to make a fucking okay. persuasion check, okay? okay. <laughs> Master Alexio, Please excuse his boorish outburst and the maniacs out the window. They are uncultured people from small towns who think they need to solve all of their problems with violence. They do not understand the delicate dance that is conversation between people of a better station than their own. You know that we are bullshitting you, and we know that you are bullshitting us. So why don't we have someone tend to that for you? And then we can sit down and have a productive conversation with all, with all of that out on the table. Roll a persuasion check. Advantage! Can Oranis, like, look less aggressive? No. To help? Oh. <sighs> she already gets advantage for me, though. Oh, yeah, true. Yes, yeah. It's <laughs> canceling out disadvantage from getting shot in the arm right before oh. this. Oh, I don't get advantage. You have, it's a straight, it's not disadvantage though, it's a straight roll. Only an 18. 18? Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. okay. Not bad. Okay. He uh. needs his turn to respond, but you notice a not a softening by any stretch of the imagination, but like there's less, there's not like a wild look in his eyes. Like he still made, seems very in control of the situation, even though he's got an arrow coming out of his arm and he's just daggers right at you, pride, like locked in with you, kind of like <laughs> you're about to put your whole neck on the line for these people with him. Yeah. So sure. we'll see what he does on his turn. Uh, that'll bring us to uh, the Triton, um, who is going to burst into the room um, holding a, uh, well, he's got like a sword at his side now. He didn't have one before. And he's got a violin as well and a bow. And he just bursts in. He's like, Master, what, what do we, what do you want me to do? Um, and he sees every, and he sees the arrow in his arm and he's going to hold an action. He's waiting on the command. Um, that's going to bring us to Aranus. Uh, okay, so I listened to Pry make this whole speech, um, and now I'm going to visibly, like, uh, be less aggressive. And if I can, um, I'm going to walk over to, uh, to uh, Elixio, pull out the arrow, and cast Healing Word. Okay. Uh, go ahead and... 
just roll a persuasion check to start to see whether or not he'll let you do it. Okay. It's just a straight roll still? Yeah, I'm coming is over it, holding up my hands. Unaggressive. Uh, uh, is persuasion a charisma? Pre persuasion mm -hmm. is a charisma base. Yeah. What is um, I would say this would go, would would the scales have tipped enough to give this advantage based Oof. on what Grokus says. And his and his blessings got you, homie. Uh, that's a nineteen, so twenty nine. Woo! Okay. Uh, you make your intentions very well known. Almost moving like towards a wounded animal, just very slowly, hands visible, and you grab the arrow and pull and he <clears throat> kind of grunts a little bit and then go ahead and cast healing word uh how much does he get uh he gets seven seven back okay uh you watch as the wound almost completely heals up there's still like a little bit of um kind of just tender flesh there but but the the, the bleeding stops and that's all i'm gonna do okay that's going to bring us to Artemis. Yeah, Artemis is just going to hold up her hands as well and just be like, listen to Pry. We're not, we're, we want to work with you. Please, just, just listen to what we have to say. And that's it. She's not holding anything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Malachite, what are you doing? Uh, I guess I'll look in the window and see what's going on. I mean, I guess yeah. I would, I don't know. If... No, you're watching all of this go down. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm just going to observe the fact that they're all holding their hands up and, you know, and everything trying to calm them down. So, uh, so I'm going to, um, I still have my Eldritch cannon. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to like get that ready. Yep. And just, I, I think I'll just hold an attack on the dog. Okay. I, I'm envisioning the noise, the, the Eldritch Cannon that you make as like the noisy cricket from Men in Black, like the teeny tiny yeah, little yeah. gun, just boom. <laughs> yeah. I can't well, remember which kind. I think it was the force okay. one. So I think that's the last one I used. Sounds good. Cool. That's going to bring us to Elixio who is going to kind of look back and forth at all of you and go, conversation, cards on the table. All right. And he waves his hand and you watch as the entire room, almost as a ripple effect out from him, changes in form. It goes from white marbled floors to dark black brown stone that's cracked and broken in places you watch as in the center of the conversation pit all of a sudden appearing is this bubbling circular basin of red steaming liquid with trails that kind of from around the room that kind of feed into it you watch as where the dog was sitting the form of the dog passes away and instead, a large, four-legged, tentacled, massive-mouthed creature, just like the one you found in the mines, sits there now, kind of like growling and with a chain around its neck going to the floor. And then Elixio kind of smiles and cracks his neck, and you watch as his form begins to change. But not like the rest, not an illusion, he watches the actual form shifts and moves. The horns on his head that were already short from a for a tiefling actually grow shorter into small points. His skin gets even deeper red. His form goes from being uh, kind of portly and out of shape to tall and muscular. A long tail grows from his back and thick leathery red wings sprout from his back as you see standing in front of you, a demonic looking creature with nothing but a scratch on his arm. And his voice changes, even with a little more guttural sound. He's like, cards are on the table now, my friends. And your weapons need to be on the floor. Uh, 
Anyone who can see him, which is everybody, uh, go ahead and roll a Arcana or History check. Well, can Peony actually see him since she ducked back behind the... You would not. You would not. Yeah. No, you wouldn't see this happen. 21 History. I think everyone would be looking up now. I mean, or would it safe to say it would be or no? I mean, you could be peeking over the window if you wanted, yeah. Because she what, what, got down. What is this going to be, Arcana or, or what? Or History. Uh, 18 Arcana for Artemis. Arcana, okay. Yeah. Yeah, be 15 either way, so 15 Arcana. Or 15 for Broke, just to make more sense for him. Okay. Be more magical. Yeah. Yep. Enough high checks here. Um, specifically, Artemis and Pry, um, through reading in various ways. Um, Artemis, you recognize this creature from a book on fiends that you read once and fiendish magic. Pry, you recognize this creature from a fantasy novel uh, that was the main antagonist of one of your heroic stories as you see a Cambion um, standing before you, a half-devil creature, similar to a tiefling in uh, some respects in that demonic blood runs through, but this is no, like, you know, down the line, the blood came back and, and created a tiefling. This is like the parents were one or the other, um, much closer to the source. And he commands you all to put your weapons on the ground. That's his action. That's the rest of his turn. Um, the Odiug has the next go, but it is waiting for a command, and that brings us to Grokus. So Grokus sees us. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, oh, he's, you really want us to go in just to, to attack, but you remember his conversation that he's got to be balanced with them, them just as much as they got to be balanced for himself. So he's going to, so to speak, bite his tongue and let his hand kind of take his hand off of his um, off his axe and just kind of just stare, just deep breathing and um, just pray to enter to give, to give himself balance that he doesn't go in there and just um, do what he wants to do because he's holding himself back as much as he can from running in there. just attacking this this apparent demon so yeah so let's hold my act just to wait there just to see if thing happens um i'll cast a spell in moments and i'll go hold like a spell in case something pops off so just okay. keep breathing in prayer sounds good that's going to bring us back to the top of the initiative order we can stay in initiative or we can break in this moment if everybody's intention is to kind of go back into conversation do we need to stay in initiative or are we good to, to jump out okay okay <laughs> So, leave an initiative. He actually doesn't even wait for you to finish putting your weapons on the ground. He walks back over to his spot where he was sitting and just kind of sweeps away an area of like dust and, and like just refuse and just sits down and crosses his legs and leans back and looks at you all expectantly uh, and then says, the ones from outside need to be in here as well, all three of them. Do we uh, hear that, or? Uh, you don't, from outside, no. He's speaking quietly. I mean, we know they're at the window because an arrow came through, Because right? they shot through it, yeah. <laughs> Pry's just gonna, like, she's hiding fear with, like, annoy like feigning annoyance at everybody else because of the whole boorish comment, and just like, get in here, please. And then she's gonna, like, sit, like, on her knees next to her weapons. So, like, put herself physically lower than him. Oh. Oranis is, because I rolled a nat one on that Arcana check. Uh, oh. <laughs> so I just assume Oranis is, like, paralyzed with fear because he was the closest to this creature when it transformed. Yep. And he's, like, full-on Chris Pratt, like, just holding his <laughs> hand up. And he's just frozen in that position. He said, <laughs> make me a, ver a velociraptor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you all come in from outside? Yeah, but yeah. I'll walk in. I'll walk in front of them, in front of Malachi and and Pianist let me. So yeah. I'll the uh, the trident actually goes over and opens the door and kind of makes a gesture with with a bit of a, a glare at you all to come in. As you enter Elixio's lair. Is she a passive perception her? on him? Seventeen passive perception to pick up anything. So he glares at us. Is there anything more in that glare? Just like a, just a anger or what kind of. Would, the, would I be able to read that at yeah, all? Yeah, 17 passive perception is pretty high. I would say that you pick up 
passive insight, what I meant to say. Sorry, passive insight. Sorry, yeah, passive insight. I, you pick up like an air of fear. Like he's sweating, and he, even though he's glaring at you, he himself seems very frightened. I put an arm on his shoulder, say, calm yourself, child. It's, it's okay. It's, he pulls down. it away. He's it's like, fine. do not touch me, dwarf. It's okay. And just broke us to you, not dwarf. You all go in and find your places. Um, he waits for weapons to be put out in the open. Um, if anyone's not doing that, please let me know. <laughs> um, but assuming that weapons are laid down, uh, you see then kind of the, the stern look on his face um, <laughs> crack back into a smile. Now still in this new fiendish form, he's like, well, well, well. <sighs> I knew you had balls on you all, but I I didn't expect a full-on assault here so soon into our relationship. Must give you credit for trying, although, hmm, at my own house, really. Poor form. He's just looking at you, Pry, during all of this. I have to agree with you. Like I said, I wanted to have a conversation, but not everyone is as comfortable in that form of getting things done. So, on the, the DuPonts, other hand. The DuPonts, they don't make it known they have a tiefling daughter. That is not important right now. Mm, I think I'm going to dictate what's important and not in this situation. You know, we're not, so, we're not so different, you and I. We have similar blood running through our veins. Where, how long have they kept you hidden? I am 20 years old, if that is what you mean. That's a long time to live outside of the eyes of society, especially for one raised in such a noble family as yourself. And Pry, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, good. Oh, that's off the table. Never mind. I'll try a different oh. one. I need a box. I need a box. I need a box. Okay. 16. Okay. Carry on. I mean, he says that, and she's just waiting. He looks around at all of you. Pleasure to meet those of you who have just entered my home for the first time. My name is Elixio. What are yours? Brokus Darkbringer. Malachite. Peony. You're an excellent shot, Peony. Your window was in the way. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? <sighs> Oh, you said you had business to do. I'm intrigued. I'm curious. I'm staving my wrath for the moment. What well, business is this? As foolish as some in the group may be, I do not think you can deny that we have certain capabilities. And to be perfectly honest, since you know who we are, we were dragged into that thing with that girl, Daisy May. We had no idea what was going on in this city. We were all brand new arrivals, and we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. She just imposed herself on the group, and we had no information about what was going on here. So we have become targeted by your organization, even though we had no intention of upsetting whatever structures you had in place here in the city. However, we are a capable group of people looking for work, and you are a person who probably needs capable people to do things for you. So this could be a mutually beneficial relationship where we work for you and you call off the dog so that we are not unnecessarily targeted anymore. As one untrustworthy person to another, when you are in a business like this, it is 
smart to diversify your portfolio just in case you ever feel like you want options. You speak well. Obviously, though they hid you from the world, they gave you an education. They're an accessor. But what about the rest of you? Does she speak for all of you in this matter? Here's what I want. We do some work for you, like she says. You let those people in the mine go. Interesting. So you've found the forge. We have. Mm. And we can be a lot more help to you with the forge than those people can. You have a dwarf. Grokus, I believe. You said your name was. I have no doubt a dwarf could be more useful in deciphering dwarven technology. Hmm. Can I ask how much you know about what Brobat is looking for down there? <laughs> how much does Brobat know about anything? Exactly. The mine is mine. Pardon the turn of phrase. Insight check. Yeah, yes, I'd also go for like it. to roll an insight check on go that Go for it. Shit. Go for it. Insight. That's a nat 20, baby. <laughs> For a total of? Uh, 25, I think. Yeah, 25. Okay. Uh, at the mention of Brobat and kind of like, what does he know? Like, Elixir almost broke character a little bit. Like, he legitimately looked annoyed at the idea that he would have to, like, report to Brobat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so uh, so the mine is yours. Uh, what exactly are you looking for down there? <laughs> Maybe so we could help out with your Whatever supper. those machines are down there, they're building something diabolical. That's my speed. Well, um, if we're being honest, we have some information that leads us to believe that Brobat knows what's down there. And uh, obviously, you're being kept out of the loop. Do with that information what you will. Mm. Then give it to me. I think we should save that until after the people in the mine are free and clear. Roll a persuasion check, Aranis. Advantage still? I don't know if it's been an hour. I mean, it's still... <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you got... You're, you haven't been hit, so your concentration is maintained. No, I'm just uh, mad. <laughs> just <laughs> mad. What's That's that? A- 21, I did 21, yep, advantage. yep. It's a, I'm milking that spell, the chat says, that's a heck of a spell to have in a, in a social encounter. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, let me roll on that. Ooh. Uh, where is his stat block? Sorry, one second. Uh, bu- 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 bu. That meets. He's got a 21 on his as well. Um, so essentially, it's kind of this like moment of tension where he's kind of looking at you and you're looking at him and he knows you have some cards and he's, and he's trying to size up how does he want to play this. Um, so he hasn't made his mind up one way or the other. Stale faced AF. He's not going to give anything away. Here's what I'll propose. I do love making a good deal. Mm. I can get the dogs called off of you. That's no problem. That's one message sent. I want what's in that mine. I don't much care how I get it. You want these peasants free from the the forge? They mean nothing to me. But they don't go free until someone is there to take their place. 
and I expect results and answers on what those machines do and how to use them, I'm going to build whatever weapon is down there and I'm going to use it. Fair enough. So if you want to take their place, be my guest. I'll have you escorted today. What about a little more wiggle room? Maybe we don't have to stay down there. We can come and go. What if we need parts or resources or to do research in the library to put it all together? Not a lot of resources down there. Mm -mm. I could be convinced to give you passage back and forth if you sign on the dotted line to have that information to me in one month's time. What are those of us who recognize it's a Cambian know about making deals and Don't contracts Don't make a deal with, with the devil. Kind of creature? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, more clearly, fiends, devils, they love contracts. It's, right. it's, uh, cultural, it's yeah. a cultural aspect mm-hmm. that um, in a society where people kind of climb over the top of each other to get to the top, um, the one structured order thing is a respect of the contract. Um, it's it, it's you guys rolled really high, so I'm going to give you a little information here. It's not necessarily that these are like duplicitous contracts with fine print that you didn't right. see before. They're just always weighted in one person's favor, but the yeah. the terms are laid out very clear. They're just you know they find people in a bad place. It's like a loan shark type thing, mm-hmm. um, and they take advantage. But we don't have to sign it until we've negotiated a contract that both parties are equally unhappy with, because that is how compromise works. <laughs> Uh, what um, what information exactly are you looking for? Well, I want to know what those machines make, and I want it. I want a version of it put together. I want the forges running, and I want to make that whatever it is. It's massive. The pieces I've seen the molds. If we find information instead of that, could we make a substitute? Or is it only putting the thing together? Depends on what the information is. Information in addition? Or information about? You're being very vague, and I'm not going to sign anything that has vagaries in it. Well, I was just trying to nail out what um, what counts as us completing our job. I don't want to be stuck down there forever. You said you wanted a weapon, but what if it is not a weapon? Then we would be stuck, and you would, would not have what you want anyway. What would the point of all of that be if not to create a weapon? I mean, right. they made all kinds of weird stuff, right? They were just people mm-hmm. like to tinker. Like I said... Well, can you even read what they wrote? I don't read Dwarvish, no. That's been one of the blocks mm-hmm. in what we've been trying to do down there. Really easy. I don't know why. It's pretty easy. I'm good with the deal. I'm just going to step back and let everybody else put their two cents in. But if one month's time comes and I don't have my machine, well, then I'm going to need, I'm going to need blood in payment instead. Understood. You're going uh, to sign with blood, and I'll collect in blood if I don't get what I want. Of course, but you're being rather pessimistic right now. <laughs> Assuming that we do fulfill our side of the contract, and you have the dogs called off, would you be interested in continuing this working partnership and making something beneficial for everyone? Oh... Let's see how this one goes before we get too far under the bed covers, shall we say. I don't understand, but okay. You're, and you're going to let them go, the people down there? 
You're not gonna like kill them. <laughs> well, we certainly can't have them talking. So what would you recommend that we do in order to protect our interests? They don't know anything. They're... And the man with the little boy, he is just concerned about his family. If you let them go, they are never going to talk about this because they are scared out of their minds. And the bookish one, the nerd, he is not even wanting to be here. He wants to go to Excessa. So what is he going to do around here? I like the idea that they leave town. If they have to stay alive, I don't want them in Floros. So you'll let them leave? Give them a card? If that's what we sign on, then I will honor that word. Can I insight check? Yes, you can. I'll show this stinky lunch further than I can shoot him. And apparently I can't shoot him that good. I do work I can look at him pretty good. 18. 18? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a contract's a contract. He would honor it. Um, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. P &E. Oh, snap. Oh, God. <laughs> 22. Okay. Sounds good. Unfazed. Unfazed. She's too stupid to know <laughs> any better. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of turns towards you, Grokus. You wouldn't be the dwarf we heard of from down in the south, would you? I have no clue what you've heard, so very well could be me. I've been denied, but I don't know what you've heard, so... There was a report from one of the lower lieutenants, Cartwright, mm. that a dwarf had been found, and Brobat wanted him... But then Cartwright's head showed up, and all of that went away. Interesting coincidence. Like I said, that could be me. There's other dwarves still around, so... It was us. We uh, took over Cartwright's territory. Quite easily, actually. Interesting. Just so you know who you're working with. We're not amateurs. <laughs> well, shall I get a contract written up for us then? Let's make a deal. Reef, bring me my parchment and quills. <laughs> what if uh, I can't read? Oh, don't worry. We just need a drop of blood and you'll be good to go. Ah. <sighs> I don't, uh... And uh, Triton comes back with a parchment and quills, and he throws it open and begins writing. And you see these like flashes and sparks of red light and like embers kind of going off. It's like hellfire as it's being written on the parchment. And there's just this big evil grin on his face, like he is just in his element and loving it. And kind of finishes up and flips it over and turns it over to you, and there are six spots for a signature um, at the bottom. The contract uh, essentially lays out that you all will provide information and services that lead to the creation of the machine that is in the Dwarven Forge within one month's time, it specifies that the that it's done in one month's time. So not just like, oh, here's the information on how to build it, we'll see you later. But the machine is actually built in one month's time. And in return, uh, Elixio will provide uh, immunity for past misdoings against the Three Blades. Um, it's very clear that that does not cover you going forward, uh, but your, your slate gets wiped clean as of now. Um, and that he will provide, he will allow the current occupants of the forge, um, and it lists them by name, um, Clarence Hugh and Dr. Anderson. Um, he will allow them safe passage out of Floros, never to return again. Fair enough. Um, Oranis is gonna 
type the contract in. Wait, there are things missing. Uh, guarantees oh. that we can enter and leave the mine in order to do our research and get oh, notes. Such an oversight on my end. <laughs> and that the three blades will not arrest those people once they have left Floros. Now, there's very little that I can do outside of the city. This is my territory. I can't guarantee that a wild animal won't find them along the road. I said the three blades will not arrest them. You said you wanted them out of the city. Once they have, are out of the city, they are not your problem anymore, so they should be left alone. Best I can do is the boundaries of Floros. Why don't you put them on a ship? Ship sails, goes away. Ship comes back. They're out of the city. And make sure that none of the sailors on the ship or other passengers are part of the blades. Or I'll go with them. If I don't have to sign, I'll gladly go with them myself and you won't see me with them again. Hmm. Where would you like them to go? Dr. Renison wants to go back to the university in Excessa. The Afflings just want to do their trade wherever. Put a city down for each party. I'll guarantee safe passage to that city. Once you're in another district has little I could do to provide protection then. In return for this addition to our deal, ooh, I'd like to know more about you. He looks at you, Grokus. I'd like a little more information on the dwarves. So let's add, shall we, any and all information that you find in the mines on the history of the dwarves that makes its way across my desk as well small price to pay for the guaranteed safety of your beloved dr anderson and the blacksmith Is that the language with which he writes it? Mm -hmm. Everything we find on the history of the dwarves? Yes. And we'll get all this typed up after session as well, uh, so that you all have record of it going forward. Are we happy with sending all three of them to Excessa, or do we want to send the family send somewhere else? The could start in Excessa, at least then they're with the professor. And it's not just a guy and his kid. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and maybe the professor can help set them up in Excessa since he has resources, maybe. Yeah. Malachite, make a wisdom saving throw. What is happening? Is he probing each of us? Natural mm -hmm. one. Uh -oh. oh, God. <laughs> All right. Within our head. Oh, wait, okay. Why are you typing? Why are you typing? I, I don't what are you typing? <laughs> what the dog do? Lord. <laughs> okay. A lot of typing. <laughs> that uh, was not a reaction I expected from Joe. I'm concerned. No. <laughs> <laughs> the. I'll let you know in a minute, Joe. Uh, the contract is amended with what was just talked about to the letter and he signs his own name at the bottom uh in one spot and then offers the other six spots to all of you uh when he signs it he takes the quill and stabs his finger and you see a bit of blood go up into the quill like it magically sucked up and then he writes with that and he offers the quill and the paper to each of you <laughs> it's not very sanitary Super gross. It, it yeah, magically wait, wait. sanitizes itself in between <laughs> each user. Yes. Uh, yeah, Ronos will take it and prick his finger and sign it. Okay. Same. 
Kryle sign her full name. Okay. Artemis is going to tense, but she's going to take the Quillen sign. Okay. So that leaves Grokus and Peony. And Malachite? Or did Malachite already sign it? Just... Malachite. Oh, I, no, didn't Malachite say I, I didn't say I have. Okay. He looks expectantly at the rest of you. What exactly, sorry, what exactly did he say when he handed us the contract? Uh, like what he, were his words? Uh, he said, here you are, you can all sign on the dotted lines. Okay. We all multi-class in the Warlock, yay. Hey, <laughs> what I always wanted. You're already cheating on your patron, Aranus. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, do you all provide resistance or do you sign? He's waiting. I sign. Okay. Can Peony bite her thumb instead of using the stabby pen? Yeah. She's like, Wah. Just, <laughs> Just smears it? Yeah. <laughs> you all watch as the blood gets absorbed by the paper and then forms itself into Peony Bellafontaine. She's like squinting at it like- yep, You can't read it, but everybody else can. I don't know what that says. What does that say? And she's like looking at Alexia. It's That's name. not my name. name. It's your name, Peony. In common. Really ugly. I think it's quite beautiful, actually. <laughs> like smudges it a bit again. You can't. It doesn't, doesn't move. It's in, in Immutable. Uh, Grokus, what are you doing? If I don't sign, if I, I, no way I can just leave them. So if I don't sign, that means death, I imagine. Well, there's always the odd chance that they figure out what's going on down there and they save their own lives. I mean, for, so what if I, so if I don't sign, I mean, is that what you're saying? That's just death for me, or is that death for what is no, that? No, it's, by that statement? it's if if we don't have all the signatures, the contract is not in place. Okay, you wanted to save those people. Cut me on thumb on my axe and sign, then walk out. Okay. Smear the blood forms into your name, and he quickly just magically fast rolls up the paper and gives it a flourish and it disappears and he kind of cracks a large smile and looks at all of you and goes well pardon the and he waves his hand and all the room kind of goes back to what it was the dog is now there instead of the odiug he though is still in his form pardon the the theatrics um we like to we like to keep a, a clean appearance for things, but um, this was not the day I had in mind when you all showed up. But it's been a productive one. I look forward to continuing doing business with you all. Aranis backs out, still spreading <laughs> it the whole way out. He he watches <laughs> you, and at one point he kind of. <laughs> 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 Do you say you wanted us escorted down, or do you trust us to find our way back there ourselves? I'm not going to waste resources on taking you to and from. The contract is signed. You all bugger off to another city or do something untoward. I'll find you. I'm not worried. All right. I expect my results in a month. Toodaloo. <laughs> Your dog pissed on the carpet. <laughs> And I cast oh. digitation and soil the carpet. <laughs> oh, that's peony leaves. Oh my god. Oh my god. Cast shit pants. That rug really tied the room together. <laughs> oh. Oh. He just gives you a puzzling look as you walk out and the door 
closes behind on Elixio's manor. Well, whatever the carpet was, there's now a soiled section of it <laughs> in one cubic feet of just shit. <laughs> Uh, when Pry leaves the estate, she just starts, like, walking with purpose out of the top shelf. Just, like, not looking at anybody. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Alright. Okay. Uh, that was, that was fucked. That was fucked. Uh, he's a, he's a demon. Or a, or a, or a devil, or a fiend. I don't know. Uh, a a Gambian, a fiend. Gambian. Do you think the shield people would kill him for us? Maybe. Or with us. I am so sorry. And she like wilts completely. <sighs> no, no, you, you, great. you stopped him from attacking us with that yes. fucking. Uh, I mean, kind of, I guess, but also I said a lot of not nice things. I'm sorry. Oh, that was definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, so, uh, what, what, what do we do? Do we want to go back to the mine? Do we go back to the realm shield? Um, I think we should go back to the mine and let those people know that they're free. Yes. Mm. Uh, maybe yeah. stop for supplies on the way. Yes. Uh, so yeah, nearest general store or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So on the top shelf, let's pull up our map. I would say. Quick. So I'm not with them because I took off before. Mm-hmm. So I just went to like any church I could do. So I'm not with them at all. So I just took off and went to some church. So and say where I'm going, I would just go to there so I can find. Yeah, the nearest church um, is on the top shelf. It's the Temple of Adeline. Um, Adeline is the most prevalently prevalently worshipped god uh goddess excuse me in the kingdom um adeline in lore is the goddess of life uh who was at the creation of the world um slain by chenadine the god of death and her body broke into a million pieces and fell like shooting stars to the ground in shawl and from her pieces was sparked life um the trees the peoples the animals and so she is worshipped um as the creator um of all and the other uh interesting tie-in with adeline is that uh in the south of the kingdom there is a small little area uh surrounded by mountains that is known as the saints preserve um and it is run and populated by the paladins of adeline um a very religiously zealous um but also incredibly powerful um group of of paladins and soldiers um so that's you have all that context um and so as you find yourself walking towards the steps of the temple um if you remember from being down in the temple of boreador down in the lower level it was well kept but not you know there wasn't fresh paint um it was weathered um you know someone was doing their best to keep it up but but it wasn't there wasn't much money to be put into the temple not the case here um this is grand um cathedral-esque um with beautiful stained glass windows and pillars um and shining marble um it is uh, quite a sight to behold um and there are clergymen and women um as well as you know parishers and whatnot kind of on the steps and going up and out um i wouldn't even notice like Grokus is so just like angry and just mad. Like he's just like painting, just being like in there. It's like not even, he doesn't even notice all the beauty around. It doesn't even see that. It just like, just focus on just getting in there, just sinking down. So people there are just a blur. Like they're just like, just not even there. Yep. Like it just himself just walking. Like he doesn't even see just like, yeah. The main uh, area that you walk into is, is the main, you know, congregation hall. Um, there are beautiful pews. Um, that kind of wrap around um, in in four sections in a half circle um, around a large altar at the front with the picture of a star, um, Adeline's symbol, um, and places for, you know, altars and candles be burnt and everything. Um, But you find a spot to sit and plop down there. I won't say a word. I'll just sit down, just um, sing off almost into nothing, just like a rock and a furrow, just, um, yeah. 
We'll revisit Crocus here in a moment. What are the rest of you doing? Door, I guess, yeah. Yeah, we need to find a store. Alrighty, so hop into our map here real quick. Let me zoom in here. I'm trying to remember where the nearest one was. Well, there's a couple different options that you've got. Um, you've got. Does, oh, go ahead. Does Grokus want? Do you do you want to have Grokus be alone or? Uh, like yeah, I don't. Like, like yeah, he didn't, I don't he didn't say anything, but like he's not gonna. Wouldn't. Like, he wouldn't even notice if someone's following at all. Like, he's, like, such a fuck. He wouldn't have noticed. So if he did, it wouldn't be like, oh, he wouldn't notice. Yeah. He honestly wouldn't I, notice. I don't want to intrude on, like, if you want to have a solo thing, but... Oh, no, it doesn't matter. And also, like, I think Peony would... Ago. It, she yeah. would follow but not intrude on your space. Yeah. Just because she has nothing else to do. Okay. So Peony, then you would kind of trek after Grokus and kind of seeing him from a distance, be able to follow him there. Um, yeah. For the rest of you, the, <laughs> excuse me, there are a couple of general stores um, if you just need general supplies. There is also, in the middle of the top shelf, um, a magic shop, um, for lack of a better term. Um, and this is the, uh, the one that you've seen advertised um, around town the most uh, with the large WWW uh, sign everywhere. This is Windmar's Wizarding Wonders. Mm. And you can even see from a distance, like, there's, like, little poppers going off and, like, colorful flags flying. It's very gaudy. Well, I wouldn't mind stopping there. She'll just point to one of the signs. General store first. Yeah. Okay. Popping into one of the general stores. Um, what are you all looking for? Um, and we can we can RP this as much or as little as you want. It is, it is a, a standard general goods store you can get. Um, no, all sorts of non magical equipment here, including foodstuffs. Um, uh, you know, bits for farming, a lot of bits for like you know sailing and like you know supply sailors would need or whatnot, just with the nature of the town. Yeah, I'm yes. just looking for rations. Okay. That's it. Easy enough to do. Um, a pack, of, a 10 day pack of rations will cost you a gold. Sweet. What about like a change of clothes or? Yeah, you end up having to go to a second store to get that, um, but easy enough to do once you're there. Um, they have a variety of things. Now you're on the top shelf, so they're the nicer clothes. Um, we're dealing with name brands here uh, and whatnot, <laughs> so. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more, but you could also, I mean, depending on what you want to look like, you could also look like you belong more on this shelf. Mm, well, I was thinking more for like the, the, uh, the captives down in the mine when we send them off. So I'm going to pick out some outfits for them. Okay. A yeah. uh, couple outfits for each of them, um, all told was going to run you about 10 gold pieces. Okay. Um, Peony, you kind of skirt your way around town and following people and whatnot, um, and eventually you come across the same large, gaudy, brilliantly white, uh, and beautifully decorated, um, cathedral of sorts, um, with a large star at the top, um, which is like a, like a, almost like an eight-pointed star, um, with a long tail at the bottom, um, and quietly poking your head in, you can see Grokus, um, you know, on a pew. She'd pad up kind of quietly. You sit on the end of the pew, not next to Grokus, but like a little space away to just be like present. Like, honestly, unless like you say something, he wouldn't have noticed. Like he's just so just like in a trance. It's like his eyes open, but like not like there. So like, you like say something, he'll notice, but like, not he's like I don't think he even knows that you're there. To just be. So. I think as as she sees not being noticed, she'll just shimmy closer and closer, um, till she's like next to Grokus. So. <sighs> you okay? 
No, but it's fine. It's fine. Is it? I mean, it's it's not, but what else can it be at this point? So we don't always have to be fine. If you want to be fine later, that's okay. But if you want to be not fine right now for a little bit, you can. I'm not a good cleric. I'm not a good cleric. So, but that's fine. I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes you gotta, you know, do what you gotta do. So, but I'm not a good cleric. So, but come on, we need to find the rest of the group. So let's, um, let's, uh, let's take off. We have no reason to really be in here anyway. So, but thank you. I do appreciate coming in here though. I really do. Um, I don't think you're a bad cleric. <laughs> no cleric, no cleric worth worth their holy book that they prey upon would do what I just did, so it's fine. Um, I think that well, I don't think all clerics would put their everything on the line for people and I think that that's admirable and I think you you did something for people and that matters for that kid and I don't know everything has a balance, right? A give and take. Sometimes Not you gotta everything. give up things you're, you know, that you live for. Sometimes, like I said, it's just for you guys anyway, so it's, it's... It doesn't make you a bad cleric. It means you're... It, it makes me not a cleric, so... But like I said, it's it's okay, because I have you guys, so I mean, it's... Sometimes you gotta lose things, so it's... It you're is what it is at this point. You're a good cleric. Because would, would Anor have wanted you to let those people die? To let those people, to let that kid die? To leave them trapped down there? His well, entire life stuck in a hole? I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't know anymore. I mean, ever since I signed that, I don't know if I can even feel it anymore. So honestly, I, I don't know how to answer that, but. Either way, though, it's um, it's fine. I really appreciate you coming, though. When you back there, when you said, "Grandpa, that was to me the happiest dwarf I think I've ever been." If I could really be like your blood grandpa, that would be that'd be <laughs> everything. So, um, as long as I have this going forward, like I'll I'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna take off the um the down that I have. And just place on the pew as we get up to go. Come on, we don't, there's nothing for us here. We can, we can leave. I give her a hug too. So I'm gonna be like, you're like, like dwarf, like hugged. You may hear like a small like, little sob come out of him, but um, that's just some coughing. It's not, it's nothing, so yeah. Peeny would hug him back, obviously. Like big, huge hug back. But she's still looks sad. <laughs> We're family, right? Yes, yeah, so, I blood. wish I wish it can be blood, but I mean, it's as much family as um, you can be without blood. So, at least to me. Yeah. Peony, go ahead and roll a sleight of hand check. What do you sneak? Twenty. What's your passive perception, Grokus? Seventeen. Okay. Not very, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Peony, when as he's kind of turning and heading to 
head out of the building, you just quietly take the medallion off the bench and slide it into your pocket. Yeah. Uh, this isn't both... Church of Anor, right? No, no, this is, this is for someone else, no. Well, he's not looking just at the medallion then, because that's a medallion to Anor. You didn't give up on him, right? I'm just going to hold on to this for a little bit until he makes his way back to you. And please don't make him feel lonely. Just slip into my bag. As you're both walking out, you see this old cleric, probably in his 80s, human, with just a very wrinkled skin um, and little bits of gray and white hair that's left um, in, in his white and yellow robes, similar to, to all the, the rest. And he's sitting on this little chair that's right inside the door. So you would have missed him when you walked in. Um, He's just sitting there, and he's got a little emblem in his hand. He's kind of rocking and kind of contentedly looking about. And as you go by, a hand just reaches out and pats you on the shoulder. And Grokus doesn't say anything. And then pats you, Peony, as you leave as well. Just a very kind of, almost a thank you for being here from an old cleric of battling. You all make your way back into the city. Um, you planning on meeting up with everybody else at this point or? Okay. So eventually you all convene. Um, you've done your non-magical shopping. If there's any magical shopping you want to do, there's a few items um, that you could pick up potentially. There are a few spots to pick up items, um, but what is the, the party's plan going forward? Just like to offload all my garbage that I picked up, like. <laughs> in exchange for like money <laughs> yeah you actually can sell back uh some stuff now you don't get very great rates offered to you don't need to i've got like three crates <laughs> worth of trash like i don't know how much stuff you was there andrew but i took yeah. as much as could fit into just in the bag, bag of holding, thing. just filling it up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you dump a lot of stuff out, and it's all mundane items and things, and and you get offered a total of eleven gold, five silver, for everything. Worth it. Okay, you offload the non-magical dwarven tools and stuff. Stuff and things. <laughs> 20 gold gold to my name should we have time sorry I missed that Dana oh I said should we head for the mine yeah so we're gonna make our way there okay you all make your way down um and interestingly enough, that same foreman uh, with kind of the, the bushy, uh, uh, losing the word, sideburns, um, <laughs> uh, that had kind of given you some grief before, before finally being um, asked. Um, you know, he sees you coming, he comes, starts, ah, no, hang on, everybody. Like, oh, wait, right. You all. Mm. Go ahead. It's been like an hour <laughs> since Alexios. So word travels fast. Uh, mm -hmm. As you go by, Patrick <laughs> is just like slack jawed, like at all of you, just like. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, Arana's <laughs> gonna do this when he walks through. <laughs> yes. Origami, remember that. And he lets you by with no problem. <laughs> um, if you're going straight to the forge, I'm going to say it's easy enough through the various means in your disposal that we've already established to get down there uh, where uh, Clarence and Hugh and Dr. Anderson are packed 
and kind of expectantly waiting. Um, they start upon you coming in, but their meager possessions um, and some bits and bobs that they've kind of collected from down there are already in bags. Um, Hugh runs straight to you, Pry, and leaps into your arms as soon as you come through the door. I think that breaks her. Like, she was, like, trying real hard to hold the last little bits of it together, but, like, he touches her, and she just starts, like, very quietly crying while she holds him. Uh, good news, guys. Um, we made an agreement to get you to, uh, oh. what was the name of Avalor? What was the name of the capital? Excessa. Do Excessa. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have a deal. To the capital city. To the capital oh. city. Safely, and, uh, they shouldn't bother you anymore. Fresh what start. type of what type of agreement? Are you all going to be all right? We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You're free to go. Um. Thank you. I don't. Yeah, you have safe passage out of the city, so you don't have to worry at all. <laughs> And he starts sniffing, he starts tearing up a little bit. And he's just like, Thank you for getting us out of here. Appreciate it. Uh, Yeah, Aronis is just going to hold out his hand. He grabs it, like both hands, and just shakes it hard strong freaking grip for a little halfling yeah. like he's got <laughs> he's got meaty hands yep uh working with him every day um q I hasn't think- let go of you pride and dr anderson kind of like is being the practical one and kind of like grabbing bags and like well let's not spend another minute down here that we don't have to <laughs> <laughs> um if the the adults are getting ready to mm-hmm. I'm assuming the group has a plan to get them out of here. Um, (laughs) Pry is going to like, you know, crouch down. So she's at a huge height and sort of like take out a bag. She's got 20 gold that she's giving them. And is like, I'm really glad that I got to meet you. And I liked reading together. Uh, I hope you enjoy the city. That is where I grew up and there are lots of interesting places to explore and there is a big library with lots of blo- books i i hope you do okay and take this oh um that's a lot of money is that way is, you that, can, is that for me for you and your father oh, you will share some with him oh you can, should share it right that is a, a nice thing to do but it is to help you make sure that you start life in that city in a good way. Starting in a new place is hard sometimes. Uh, do, are my friends going to be able to come with me? From here? I don't think so. But Excessa is a very big place and there are lots of nice people there. And you are a wonderful person, so I'm sure you will make new friends. I sound scary. It is a beautiful place, and all adventures have some scary parts, but that doesn't mean there aren't good parts, too. No, the scary parts are the best parts of the book. (laughs) Okay. Will you come see me sometime, maybe? Maybe, yes. Okay. How much do I have to give my dad? (laughs) I will leave that decision up to you. You do what you think is right. (sighs) Should just give him the bag. I know. I didn't. Like stomps over and like hands it up to his dad. Like (laughs) (laughs) he's like, where, where, where'd you get this? Where'd you, where, where did you get this from? Kind of just points over in your direction, Bri. Uh, ma'am, this is Please. not necessary. He's rich. Don't worry about it. I. Uh... <laughs> uh, 
I appreciate your generosity. Centers it off well. Sticks it in. Do we have time to go back to our place and, and grab things? I've got my tools there. I, I'm going to need those if I'm going to make a life for us. You could probably what... lost them there. No? Well, I'm certainly not going without grabbing my library. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm, I must have my research. I want to say Elixio is reasonable enough. Don't know if he's that reasonable. Not 100 percent sure though. Yeah. What did the contract exactly say about them leaving? Uh, that he would There's... provide safe passage to the city. So there were not anything for or against, you know, the yeah. timetable on that, which is a okay. bit of a loophole that I should have thought of. But anyway, that's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we walk them there, it should be fine. Then we're at least keeping an eye on them and they can't really do any shady stuff. I don't think we're breaking an agreement. No. No. If they see that they're like grabbing their stuff to leave. Um what was that um what was that thing that you were all looking for? You mentioned a part that you might want to look for. Uh yeah, it was a thousand tooth uh <laughs> screw driver wrench three thousand i know exactly what it is not me joe but malachi <laughs> does yeah, yeah, he yeah. just says it word for word yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. was so confident <laughs> yeah. malachi knows exactly what it is yes, so he just do. says it yeah thousand two with titanium plated corkscrew drive yes exactly um, what i said yep uh yeah. He goes, I have no idea if this is it or not, but, and I wasn't able to get it out, but, and he kind of brings you over to one of the machines and kind of points deep in it uh, from a panel that's been removed. And he's like, that looks like what you might be after. I couldn't, you're going to have to disassemble a lot of this to get it, but. Does it look and, like it to me? Uh, yep. Yeah. Cool. But it also looks like if you take it from this machine, this machine ain't going to work. Oh, fuck Good. my tits. <laughs> oh, I'm not muted. <laughs> Thanks for uh, that, Darby. Man. <laughs> man. My me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love a good hot mic. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yes, the part is in there, um, but taking it would uh, mean that this machine no longer runs. Cool. Thanks for showing us that. That's the least I could do. Um, all right, can can you show us the way out? I'm assuming we're probably just going to have to take them up on Artemis's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hugh is freaking so pumped. Like he is <laughs> so I, happy for that. Can I let Hugh use the slip, the cone of slimming to go up? So like him and his dad can go up at the same time. Have they seen what this thing does? I'm trying to think because you all used it to they get through the door. Yeah. Yes, he came yeah. up scary. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. you go to put it. You go to put it on Hugh's head, and his father's like, "Ah, uh, no, 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 no." I tried. Sorry. Mm -mm. And of course, Hugh was like, "Dad, I want to try." He's like, "Ah, uh, no." <laughs> <laughs> But if you're good on the broom, I'll let you hold pedal while you go up. Oh, Dad, can I hold the dragon? He's like, fine. Can hold the dragon. <laughs> yeah, she'll curl up in his lap as they go up. He's so happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Artemis Letting the child play with not one dangerous toy, but the other dangerous <laughs> live animal. <laughs> yes, but he's in his full form doing that. I feel better about that. No offense, just that's that thing is no, no, odd. No, no, it's fine. None taken. It's all good. 
All right. One by one, you bring them all up and take them out of the mine where Patrick does the, from the other direction now, just like, wait, and now you have people. He, he literally starts to say, what, there were people down there? I, she, mm-mm. Oh, okay, okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> As soon as they leave, Oranis is going to start very nervously playing uh, his liar. Okay. But yeah, who all is like taking them to get their stuff? I wasn't going to take them because I feel they're fine. Okay. Yeah, anyone who wants to can escort them um, for the sake of expediency. Like, they, they get their things from their homes within a couple hours and are ready to um, get on the next either wagon or ship out um, of, uh, of Floros. Now going to Excessa, a ship would be a little weird because you, you just add more to your travel time. So there is a there is a, a basically a coach that is, you know, takes people. Um, it doesn't run till the next morning, um, but they are ready to go um, whenever whenever that becomes available. All right. They sleep in their own homes uh, for the evening, um, unless you want them to do something differently. And you all, uh, they actually offer their, their homes as well to you. Like, and Clarence is like, look, there's not a lot of space and I don't have a bunch of beds or anything, but if you all need a place to stay, please know that my, my door is wide open. We'd appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Um, he looks a little worried now that you've taken him up on the offer. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, right, um, I'm going to need to go to the grocer, um, but yeah, we'll make it work. <laughs> that night, if you were all staying with Clarence and Hugh, um, it's a small kind of two, three roomed uh, place, but he makes up cots for you all in the living room um, and he cooks for you all. And um, it's very, very simple foods, um, but he kind of has uh, a mixture of dumplings and, and beef uh, that he cooks up um, and could see him working just very hard on everything. And like, uh, he keeps going back to this little notebook um, and like flipping it open, like checking, like, okay. And like doing the next little thing, coming, coming back and checking, okay, okay, uh, as he cooks. Um, getting frustrated when it flips closed because it's a very tiny little notebook and having to flip back open to the same page. Like, all right, okay. Can I uh, come over and just like quietly hold the book open at the right page for him? Oh, uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I haven't used this thing in a long time. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to help by like being in the kitchen? Um, can you cut those onions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, but he mixes up uh, yeah, dumplings and a beef stew, um, and uh, you all have a nice hearty dinner. Um, it's a little salty. Um, he, he went a little overboard on the salt, um, but other than that, it's pretty good. And Hugh tells you all stories that make very little sense um, or have climaxes that are really not all that exciting, but little things from his world uh, and growing up here in Floros. Uh, that time he caught a fish and it had one eye and things like that. Um, and Clarence just has small conversation. Dr. Anderson's back to his place. Um, so, yeah. The night ends and, or the night comes to an end and you all head to bed. And upon getting your long rest, um, everybody gains a level. Hey. So you bump up to level six. Ooh. Oh. Oh, snap. Extra attack or infinite Magical ammunition. <laughs> well, 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 you just shot somebody with non-magical ammunition, so there's a thought. Um, mm -hmm. While you're sleeping, Aranus, what do you dream about? Ooh, what do I dream about? Okay. Um, or do you dream at all? I imagine... Honestly, I imagine after seeing a freaking... Uh, uh, devil dude transform in front of him. I think Aranis has a dream where he's just like performing in like a basic tavern or something. Um, and the 
audience starts like morphing into into the devil. So I don't think he has a very restful sleep. Yeah. It more they morph and they're they're always smiling and laughing and holding contracts out for you to sign. You read the contract and it says you'll die in the morning, and it's just this really horrific kind of nightmarish type stuff. And they're all laughing and then all of a sudden. You close your eyes at one point, trying to keep away from, from the nightmare scenario, and then it goes silent. And you open your eyes, and, and you're still in the tavern you're performing in. But there's just one patron. And they have their back to you, and they're sitting at a table. And they're drumming their fingertips to the music that was there. It's a tall, thin figure wearing some sort of black suit, it looks like, with a high collar kind of pulled up. Um, and they have hair that's kind of messy and kind of spiked at places that's just inky black. And they're just, from behind, you can see them, they're just kind of vibing and drumming their fingers, um, you know, against the table. Um, Aranis is going to make like a slow, wide... Uh, semicircle just to kind of come around and see the face. As you come around, you see a pale, thin, long face with black eyes. Not dripping at the moment, but black and almost swirling with dark patterns. And the face just looks up at you and says, it's about time that we met. Have a seat. Kind of lifts his foot and kicks the chair opposite of him out for you to see, for you to sit down. Oranus is not going to sit down. <laughs> oh, come on now. Think that I'm going to hurt you? After I gave you all those shiny new abilities? Uh, uh, Oranus is going to slowly sit down at that. There we go. Um, and say... That, that was you? Was it? That was me. Are you the one I've been seeing? You're gonna have to forgive me. That's, uh, I like to make a good first impression. That was a terrible impression. Oh, or was it memorable as fuck? Touche. What do you want? It's really not about what I want, Aranis, is it? Because it's really more about what you want and what I can give you. And what would that be? Revenge. Revenge against your brother. Okay. Let's talk. Let's talk. You have a sword. You're welcome. Thank you, it's uh, very nice. You've got some new, uh, bang, bang. You're welcome. There's more where that came from. Let's just put it that way. Okay. What's Keep... the catch? The catch is that every once in a while, I'm going to have something that I need done. Well, really, that's more enigmatic than it needs to be. There's really one thing that I need done. What is it? A little south of the town, there stands a tall black tower. And in that tower, there's a mirror. And around that mirror are some runes. And I just need you to take that... that brand new shiny sword that I gave you, and just tiptoe over to that tower, and just use that sword to mm, mark a couple of those runes off for me, if you would. That's it. And the rest is yours for life. How soon does this need to be done? I'm a pretty patient person, but... Ugh, sooner rather than later... You know, when you get to it. And you can help me get what I'm owed. Oh, 
I can drop it in your lap, Aronis. I can pluck him and put him on a table for you. Uh, Aronis is just going to slowly raise his hand uh, and say, we have a deal. Put her there, partner. And as soon as you grab the hand, you wake up. Uh, is anybody else awake or am I just... Is everybody else asleep? Yeah, Aronis is just going to lay just heavy breathing. Um, he's just gonna lay there, staring at the ceiling. The morning comes, and you're all level six. Um, do we need to roll hit dice real quick? Ooh, or always take taking it? the average, baby. <laughs> Never roll. Yeah, uh, I just yeah, took yeah, average. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> multi-classing or, or taking a, a different uh, a different level in the ones that you ha already have multi-classed? Yeah, I'm gonna triple class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I I no joke. Warlock, I do again. have ideas for a triple class peony. Yeah. I have a I have a character I've never played, but his name is Gadget. He's a level fourteen everything. He's got one level of every class. And it's not as bad as you'd imagine. Like, he has, like, a million cantrips. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm imagining extremely flexible. I think I'm going to take a level in Artificer. Okay. And I, don't know, I don't know what I'm choosing. I'm taking you don't know one. what you're choosing yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Aranis, what are you taking? Level of uh, Warlock. Okay. And then... Pry, Artemis, and Malachite, any multi-classing or just bumping up in your respective classes? Just bumping up. Yep. Okay, sounds good. The morning comes and you're all able to escort Dr. Anderson and um, Hugh and Clarence to uh, where the coach would be to take them away and pay the fees and put their bags in. Hugh kind of gives each of you a hug uh, as he goes, holds on to you a little longer, Pry. Um, Clarence comes by and shakes all your hands. Um, and then gets in, kind of pulls his boy off of you gently. He's like, come on, son, we gotta get going. Um, and Dr. Anderson kind of stands in front of you, and he's got a stack of papers in his hand. He's like, right, um, I was in the middle of something very important when I got nabbed, and I have no... Uh, you know, business of asking this for another favor, or or even in under. You know, I don't know if any of you are so inclined, but um, perhaps you, my good sir. And he kind of looks towards you, Malachite. Um, you seemed um, kind of interested in the sciences, and well, this is something going on here in the city that really needs to be attended to. If you would just give it a look. Uh, yeah. What? What? What's up? He kind of hands it off to you. He's like, well. Uh, you may have seen my notices up and around, but there's a there's a terrible environmental impact happening from the sailors um, just completely stripping the the, the coast of, of eelgrass. And it's it's causing havoc on on the ecosystems and they need to stop. They need to they need to cut back in the amounts that they're taking and, and you know, have more of a strategy and whatnot. It's it's just it's all in here. But at its right. current rate, it's going to cause irreparable damage to the coastal life. All right. Thank you. I'm, I'm very passionate about this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I see that. Um, I'll uh, thank you for entrusting it to me. I will uh, try to send a message and check in with you whenever I can to see how it's going. Yes. Uh, yeah. Please do. All right. Um. Thank you, and thank you all. Yes. Um. Uh. Fairly well. And he just turns and gets in. And the cart goes away. What is next for all of you? Uh, so whenever everybody's up, um, Aranis is going to go over to Grokis uh, and say, uh, I told you that you would be the first one to know. Um, if but it's, a, a, it's a... It's, it's okay now. Um, 
It's, no. it's fine. You no. you don't have to. It's, it's, it's fine. No, I I, uh, I I saw something uh, in my dream, and um, I don't know what it is, but it's given me some kind of power. And I told you you would be the first one to know, so there it is. Hopefully, gains that power for um for, for good. I mean, I'm not sure what to say much about dreams. Not that good with analyzing those, so. But, I mean, if you're okay with it, I mean, it's, I mean, are you, is this, is this a bad thing or is this a, a good thing? A uh, little bit of both. Kind of made a deal um, to be able to keep these abilities so I can do what uh, I would like to do um, in exchange for going to some tower at the south side of town. Cool. Well, that, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm not gonna try and ask what you need, what, whatever you need that power for. I mean, I've tried, so, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So, I mean, as long as you're okay with it, that's, that's all that matters. So, I mean, thank you for letting me know. So, I mean, yeah, as long as you're good with it, I mean, I guess we can find that. Is there some tower you said we have to find or what? What about a tower? Uh, I'm just supposed to go there and uh, it's on the south side of town and I'm supposed to go there and etch out some runes. It sounds easy enough at least. I mean, it's something complex, so. Is Artemis yeah. anywhere near here? <laughs> Artemis? I'd imagine she'd be close, uh, low, trying to listen. <laughs> yeah, Aranis is gonna give Artemis a look and be like, is he okay? Not like that's what the look mm -hmm. is. I'm not gonna say it out loud, but like definitely like something's up with. Is Kini around? Really I mean, they're all around right now. I'm assuming. <laughs> oh. <Yes. laughs> then just because Artemis and Aranis have obviously traveled with Grokas for the longest. Like, can I talk to you both really quick? Of Kini, what's going on? Where Grokus can't hear us. <laughs> uh, with passive insight of 17, do I notice, like, I, I'm sure I imagine, like, I notice. Can I stealth? <laughs> yes, if you want to do, I'll say you do a sleight of hand, and you're trying to beat a 17. Uh -huh. oh, but I mean, oh, even when I, when I notice um, Arana's giving, like, Artemis look, probably, I feel like, with the passive insight, probably. Of the team, I've noticed, I mean, that's like, a really high. Well, although passive really insight is more for more. for intentions. I mean, it, it's on okay. the line. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. So, what'd you get, Peony? <laughs> I was like, "Where is it?" And it's because I'm in my character. Oh, the level up, Mancer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just in character. Characters don't actually have sheets. <laughs> Is that a hand? Yeah. 14 plus four. That's how it works. Yeah. So 18. Uh, yeah, that just beats your passive insight. So yeah, you perception, don't, yeah. Yeah, you don't catch. You don't catch what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah, what's uh, what's up, Peony? What's going on, Peony? Can I pull him outside real quick? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go secret. Focus is not doing okay. Agreed. Nah. She'll... Signing the deal with a a big scary man from not here. I don't was super fun for him. We made a cleric. We did. Trying to deal with the devil. We did. Not our smartest move. No, it's not. 
Um, uh, and I don't like that he's sad. This been a lot. I I don't know how to fix this. We can't get out of the deal now. But I don't think we can fix it. I think we just have to be there for him. Because I don't... We can't change what we did. And we did it for good reasons. I think we just need to be here for him. And be around. For whatever happens next. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, anyways, back inside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Aranis is going to go back in um, and just say, okay, uh, what's our next move? <laughs> we already have information that we can feed Elixio on bits and pieces if we need to. Um, but do we want to look into the mine more? Do we, and he looks at Bro or at Grokus, uh, do we want to go talk to Robad or what, what, what are we thinking? Do you still want to speak with Robat, Grokus? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, it's whatever the group wants to do, so. Whatever the group decides, and I'll definitely follow that. So, but if you guys decide, I'll, I'll follow along. So it's fine. Well, so does anybody have like a long-term plan here with this contract we all just got ourselves into? Uh, we're probably gonna have to find a way out of the contract, and the only way I can think of for that would be destroying Elixio. Or we make the machine, but not have it in wake in a way that works. Or that, yes. We break it on the inside. Yeah. Well. We can work on both at the same time. We could. Yeah, I think I think we need to prioritize that because we're stuck in this contract now. So something tells me if we try to kill him, it's not going to work in our favor. We need time to try and figure out how to kill him. If we're going to. At least we know we what have he is now. We have a month. True. I wonder if uh, Realm Shield people would get involved if we told them what he really is. I think that's a good idea. I really think we're maybe they'll help if we tell them what both of them are, maybe. I think we should do that because they're probably think... going to be watching us now. Is there a way we can uh, like magically send a message to uh, Azure. Sending. I can do that. Oh, 25 words. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow the most stressful part of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Let me cut straight to the all right, I'm gonna cast Sending to Azure. Okay. Azure, this is Artemis. Elixio is a fiend. And Robat, we found, could potentially be a vampire. What should we do next? That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Uh, a moment later, you hear a voice come through. Artemis, good to hear your voice, darling. 
Fiend and Vampire. Sounds very realm shieldy. Mm. Come meet us for a drink later tonight, we will talk. Beat up. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just say, okay, I'll be there. That would require another sending spell. God damn it, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to do it, you can, but. <laughs> well, we did long rest, so you know what? You yeah. did, yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. There we go. That was it. That was the entire use of your message. Okay, that's very. <laughs> just, a lot, of, lot of spells at your disposal. <laughs> don't need the criticism right now. We just need to deal with the devil. <laughs> Tell me you sent another sending just to say I don't need the criticism right now. <laughs> oh, no. I don't need the. I'm sauce. really under a lot of pressure. <laughs> no apologies. Not meant to criticize. Just. Happy to hear from you. Glad you're okay. Come talk about this deal with the devil tonight. <laughs> Furiously texting back and forth. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like Rem Shield will be uh, interested. Can meet with Azure later in the evening. Sounds good to me. I think there, with the party having many different roads in front of them, many different avenues, yeah. I think there we're going to end our story for tonight and pick back up next time with what the balancers decide to do. <sighs> what a great session, everybody. Dude. Blake, way to break my heart, okay? Blake, yeah. buddy. I shed some tears. Some Blake. tears were shed. Straight up tears. God. God Gross. damn it, Blake. Yeah, it wasn't, it was, <laughs> it was, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust it wasn't, um, yeah, that was, yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> was heavy. Thank you, everybody, for watching, for joining us on our story uh, as we completed our kind of next arc. And now we look forward to the future uh, with our heroes. Uh, make sure to do all the things that Darby said to do at the beginning of the episode. Subscribe, like, comment, share the video, all those good things. And we'll see you next time in Floros.